Wi-Fi 6, the latest and greatest, at least for the next couple, probably weeks, I don't know. It looks like they come out with a new one every day. But we got the AX1800 Wi-Fi 6 router from Netgear, which is gonna bring us the latest and greatest technology today, but not tomorrow, because it's not really future-proof. It's one and a half times faster compared to AC routers and recommended for 20 or more devices. Although, I'm a little confused here. On the back, it says it's suitable for up to 20 devices. So what is it, up to 20? or 20 or more devices because that's a really big difference are we over or under 20 i don't know because i know i have over 20. but alas it does support netgear armor cybersecurity to keep all your devices safe from malware and malicious websites and it even supports the nighthawk app to have wi-fi simplified so you can easily set up the device as well as use it and see all the different things with the device with an app, which is cool, so you don't have to go to the 192.168. whatever. We have four stream Wi-Fi, so you can stream 4K Ultra HD content to more devices at the same time. We have uplink and download OFDMA for faster Wi-Fi download and upload speeds by transmitting to multiple devices at the same time, but that's what a router does. And then we have a quad-core processor providing more power to manage your smart home connectivity, which is great because I have a ton of smart home devices everywhere. We need all the connectivity we can get. We're looking at cutting edge performance with one and a half times better performance than an AC router with up to 1.8 gigabits per second for fast wireless speeds. We have more Wi-Fi for more devices because of all that same stuff, powerful processor, four gigabit ethernet ports, so that's great. You can have four wired connections right into it. We have Wi-Fi 6 supporting all current devices and it's backwards compatible. And then we even have voice control by Amazon Alexa and the Google Assistant, although I'm not really sure what I would need to do with that, but it's cool to have, I guess. We're looking at Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax dual band Wi-Fi with both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks along with backwards compatibility for A, B, G, N, and A, C. We have 10 24-QAM for 25% data efficiency and faster speeds than 256QAM routers. We have a powerful quad-core processor, 256 megabytes of flash memory, and 512 megabytes of RAM, along with the five gigabit ethernet ports, one WAN and four LAN. We have standard-based Wi-Fi security, 802.11i, 128-bit AES encryption with PSK, automatic firmware updates delivering the latest security patches to the router, and a VPN support so you can stay safe on the internet. All of that inside this brown box. Very nice. There's no graphics or anything, so let's see what's inside the box. All right, quick start, one, two, three. Download the Nighthawk app on your phone to install your router. Secure your devices with Netgear Armor. Do more with the app. Okay, that's basically it. So to be fair, this router is not for the biggest house in the world. It covers about 1,500 square feet of space and, you know, walls are gonna interfere with that. So maybe you're looking at closer to 1,000. I don't know. So you might want some extenders and maybe a mesh setup, which they do offer. Something like this to have a mesh setup so you can have more access points around your house so you can get the strongest signal no matter where you are. Inside the box, I have a nice flat black ethernet cable with a nice amount of length, along with the power adapter to give this thing all the juice it needs. And then we have it right here in all its glory. Okay, it didn't really peel off, it kind of just came off. So it wasn't really that exciting, but look at that shine. We're looking at one, count them, two, count them, three antennas to give us all that wireless connectivity. Over on the front, we have five LED indicator lights. First one, power LED, two, internet LED, three, Wi-Fi LED, four, ethernet LED, and five, WPS LED. Pretty much, it'll tell you everything that's going on right here, although you have the app, so you don't ever have to look at this, unless the app doesn't work, then I guess you have to do it the old fashioned way. Over on the back of the WPS button, the Ethernet in port from your modem, one, two, three, four Ethernet out ports at one gigabit speeds, a reset button to reset everything, and then the power port to get all that juice. Down on the bottom, of course, it does say your wireless network name and password by default. Of course, you're going to want to change that. Probably. A lot of people don't, though. But of course, if you don't want to use the app, you can go to the router login page and log in like the old fashioned way. Down on the bottom, we do have some rubberized feet along with some mounting ports so you can mount this to a wall. And really, not much to see. Just a bunch of ventilation areas and it's just a router. Woo! So now we're going to get this thing set up because we got to use it to connect to the internet. 
All right, so I got the router set up. It was a very simple process. You sign up, make your account, you go through the step-by-step -step instructions. There's like three steps, you get connected, you're good to go. I recommend using your same Wi-Fi name and password as your previous router if you wanna make sure all your devices automatically connect to your new one, otherwise it's gonna be a hassle getting them all connected to the new network name. But looking at the app, it's actually very cool, although it is pretty basic. You're still gonna to have to use the web interface if you wanna get more in depth. So this is pretty much for people who don't really know what they're doing. But it's actually pretty cool, so you can go to the device manager see all the devices that are connected and kick them off one by one if you want to you can see what's on the 2.4 gigahertz network what's on the 5 gigahertz network and what's connected with an Ethernet cable we can go back and now we can see security you can protect with armor now although you only get a 30-day free trial so I'm not even gonna bother on that cuz I want to pay for that and then we have internet speed which is actually really cool because you can run a speed test of the router while it's connected to the modem so you can see if you're getting your full speed that you're paying for so right now we're gonna run it and see what we get this is actually kind of sad because I'm supposed to be getting one gigabit down, but upload is capped at 35 megabits a second. Abysmal, I know, but it is what it is. That's the best they can do because that's the best I can get over here. I don't like it, but I gotta deal with it. The ping is usually pretty low, so let's see where we're working with. Looks like we got 36 for the upload. We're passing 800 for the download, very nice. Okay, so we're actually getting really close to what we're supposed to be getting. That's always a good sign. Final result, 837 down, 36 up, and a seven millisecond ping. Definitely not too bad. It says your internet speeds are extremely fast. Kind of, <laughs> at least the download speed. Next we have the network map, and as you can see, I have the extender installed because, funny story, the router doesn't make it to the studio. The other router I had did. This one, it cuts off right at the door. I don't know, so I got the extender halfway between, and the extender reaches out here. Barely, it still doesn't really help that much. But, as you can see, we got that. So I can't do a speed test of this phone connected to the router itself right now, but I did one while I had signal on the router, and this is what I got. I was able to pull 481 megabits per second down and 25 megabits per second up, which is, you know, download was good. Upload, I'm not sure why it was lower than the 35, because 35 was already really low, and we had a ping of eight milliseconds, so, you know, it's doing a good job. One of the other features I'm liking about this is we have a traffic meter so you can actually see how much data you use on your router and it's actually kind of cool to look at. As you can see, I use quite a bit, actually 130 gigabytes so far, that's pretty impressive. And you can also set up a guest Wi-Fi network if you don't want to give people your password when you have guest over, so that's actually pretty cool. I mean, every router does that, but you can do it here, all within the app, very nice. So with all that being said, the router is good if you have signal. Remember, it covers 1,500 square feet, although it has trouble penetrating walls, I guess. So you go down to maybe like 700 square feet. I mean, it's not that far from the router, but it doesn't make it over here. So that's pretty crazy. I'm not liking that. But when you have signal, connection's very good, very strong, and you have a lot of download speed. Overall, it's a good router if you have a small place and you don't need to fill up too much area. And if you do, you might need to get those extenders that have a little mesh set up. But that's something for another video.